most in-depth weather forecast video Friday evening and boy this weekend forecast is kind of giving me a headache if you've been following the forecast trends over the last couple of days it's been a little bit back and forth with uh, the weekend forecast which day would be more active when's the severe weather threat um, it's all dependent on a cold front which uh, the models have been struggling with the timing of that front would it sweep through Saturday would it wait until Sunday is there gonna be something in between and uh, we've had to make more tweaks to the weekend forecast today, so we're going to get you caught up on that in this video. Before we do that, though, let's quickly review where we've been today. There was a swath of uh, showers and storms that moved through this morning, and the heaviest rain generally concentrated in the kind of the middle of our viewing area, across the 224 corridor in Mahoning County over to Lawrence County. Once you go south of there and north of there, amounts were quite a bit lighter. We had some rumbles of thunder, but... No severe weather here locally, even though we had uh, briefly gusty winds here and there. Zooming out and taking a look at the rainfall for the month and the season and the year so far, picked up 0.22 earlier today at the Youngstown Warren Airport. That brings our monthly total up over 3 inches. That's about 0.67 inches above average through today's date. Since March the 1st, the start of meteorological spring, we've picked up a little over 10 inches, and that's a little less than 1 inch above the average. It's been a wetter spring overall than last spring in, in most of the uh, valley. And for the year, we're up to 17.63 total precipitation when you count rain and melted down snow. And that brings us to 2.75 inches above the average. No, uh, no threat of a drought around here anytime real soon. Boy, it's muggy outside. Dew points started out this morning in the upper 50s, but they've been in the middle and upper 60s for a lot of the afternoon. It really is rather uh, uncomfortable outside, even though it didn't get as warm today as we thought it would because of, of clouds and rain lingering a little bit longer. That same little, what we call an M, uh, uh, MCV, mesoscale convective vortex, a little mini area of low pressure, the same thing that brought us the rain this morning and midday, brought a severe weather threat to our east earlier on. And actually with our front up here, there was a tornado in northern lower Michigan earlier on today. Vivid hook echo not something you see very often in the northern reaches of Michigan but uh, yeah that's where the uh, severe weather was ongoing earlier on today look at the warmth that's pushing off to the north now we didn't get uh, quite we didn't quite get I should say into this true you know tropical air mass today thanks to clouds holding temperatures back a little bit but Columbus at this hour is at 86 Cincinnati is at 84 look at what's happening over the Rockies Denver is at 34 degrees Denver 34 degrees and uh, we've seen snow in Denver today, and compared to 24 hours ago, it's 51 degrees cooler in Denver, Colorado. It is a huge change. Now, they had 80s and 90s out there during midweek, but today, some snow, temperatures near freezing, just an enormous change. It happens out there at this time of the year and again in the fall season. You can see some wild, wild swings in temperatures along the front range of the Rockies. All right, we can forecast with the midday update today. The uh, Storm Prediction Center did... Uh, color most of western and northern Ohio, northwestern PA, western New York in the slight risk for severe weather tomorrow. Slight is a 2 on a 1 to 5 scale. We like to use the numbers a little more than the terminology. Um, people will have an easier time digesting the numbers than the difference between slight, enhanced, and moderate, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if you think of our, our, our scale as a 1 to 5 scale, it's a, it's a 2, a level 2 tomorrow. Uh, it's looking a little bit more like severe thunderstorms will try to erupt as we get into the mid-afternoon hours for tomorrow. Now, in our local area, the number one risk with late-day storms tomorrow would be damaging wind gusts. Uh, remember, wind is wind, and if it's a 60-mile-per-hour wind, that can do equivalent damage to a very low-end tornado. Um, kind of the same thing. So wind is wind. If you uh, are under a severe thunderstorm warning at any point tomorrow evening, treat it as if it were a tornado warning. Make sure you're in your safe place because there could be some pretty strong winds. Uh, hail. I think it's a little more likely off to our north and west mid-afternoon when these storms first get going. I would expect less hail to the south and east, but uh, still, hail is going to be a possibility. And we have a non-zero tornado risk with these afternoon and evening storms across northern Ohio and northwest PA. It's low. Uh, there's not a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere tomorrow, but it's still kind of a, a non-zero risk. What about timing? I think our local area and our TV viewing area, if you can uh, catch us on cable or satellites, yeah, 5 to 8 p.m. generally in our five-county viewing area. First areas to uh, have that risk will be in the northwestern part of our viewing area out here, and then the last areas to the south and east as we get into 
mid-evening. Now, the day will start out dry tomorrow, and will be dry through most of the afternoon. In fact, a fairly sunny and just stinking hot afternoon. Uh, today, temperatures underachieved, but we'll have no trouble getting into the upper 80s tomorrow with more in the way of sun and those dew points at or above 60 degrees. But then storms will initialize as we go into, uh, let's back this up to mid-afternoon. So the I-71 corridor first, mid to late afternoon. So think Cleveland, Mansfield, Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati uh, between, say, 3 and 5 p.m. And then, as I mentioned, in our TV viewing area, this is more like 5, 6, 7 o'clock. Can these weaken as they come south and east? Yes, but we're into the time of the year in which it's daylight until 8.30 or so. And so uh, it's not like uh, it's earlier in the spring or in, in late in the summer when it's getting dark at 7, 7.15, um, and storms tend to run out of gas as we lose the daylight. With the daylight continuing until 8.30, Will these undergo significant weakening? That remains to be seen, but they'll have time to, to stay pretty strong as they cascade through our viewing area, and then things will quiet down in a hurry as we go deeper into the evening and the overnight hours tomorrow night. Now, Sunday's forecast is a good news, bad news situation. The good news is the severe weather risk is lower than it looks like it would be because the front's going to start speeding up finally on Sunday. It looked like yesterday that this front may hang up enough to produce a severe weather threat on Sunday in eastern Ohio, parts of West Virginia, a good chunk of Pennsylvania and New York. But I think the front's just moving too fast now for that to happen. So, yes, there could be a shower or storm around midday. Uh, but the bigger story Sunday is going to be the cool down. With the faster speed of the front, temperatures will fall faster Sunday afternoon. We're going to approach 90 on Saturday. Be around 57 or 58 by the end of the afternoon in most spots on Sunday. And then quieter weather early on next week. So, again... We can forecast very up and down. Record high of 90 on Saturday. Record is 89, set in 1934. And just a reminder, if we do hit 90, it'll be the earliest 90 in the spring season we've had in 60 years. We haven't had a 90 before May 26th since 1962. But that 72 is a midday high on Sunday. We'll see those temperatures in the 50s to around 60 later on in the afternoon. So yeah, our model shows that. Look at, look at the swoosh. I'll back this up. Just swoosh. The day starts out kind of muggy. Temperatures peaking around 70, 72, and then there you go. End of the afternoon, we'll be closing the windows. It'll be getting kind of kind of cool outside. All right, an unsettled period lies ahead towards the middle of next week. Uh, if you need to mow, and a lot of us will need to after uh, the rain that we've had today, and we'll have uh, at times over the weekend. Uh, Monday will be a good day uh, as the yards dry out. Tuesday will be dry. But then Wednesday and Thursday, pretty good chances of showers and storms, and some of those showers may linger into the day on Friday. I mentioned last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks that Memorial Day weekend will feature a warming trend. Will it rain? Too early to say. Uh, that's still, we're too, still too far out to get into that uh, sort of specificity. But uh, we can say with a fair amount of confidence that a warming trend will get underway as Memorial Day weekend gets underway. And I think by Memorial Day Monday, uh, we have a good chance of seeing those 80s making a comeback. In the meantime, stay weather aware over the next uh, 24 hours or so. Check in with the latest forecast on the Storm Tracker 21 app, WFMJ.com. All of our social media outlets, including mine, I'm right down here at the bottom. Make sure you're following my new Facebook page that I debuted about a month ago. Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm is where you can find me on Facebook. Uh, the Storm Tracker 21 accounts, make sure you're following those. Uh, we'll get through a busy, potentially busy Saturday evening. Things will quiet down by Sunday afternoon, and uh, no severe weather risks look all that likely, it looks like as we go into next week, even though it may be kind of an unsettled period, Wednesday and Thursday. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here on Monday.